Hello and welcome to Indie Cinema Showcase special edition of the Florida Film Festival. I'm your host, Christina Carmona, and I'm standing in the lobby of the Enzion Theater, which hosts the Florida Film Festival each year. Through these doors, the Enzion is undergoing renovations with new carpets, drapery, chairs, tables, and everything in between. Later on in the episode, we'll be talking with Jen Gull and find out what else is planned for the future of the Enzion. But first, let's talk Film Fest. The 22nd annual Florida Film Festival featured 10 days of food, films, and fun. And what a record-breaking year it was. With 170 films representing 23 countries, the Florida Film Festival has become one of the most beloved fests in the state. 143 of this year's films had Florida premieres and 22 were world premieres. We invited local filmmakers David Kusky and Fernando Torres to be our guest hosts. So let's check out the fest. Brian Queen, so your film is screening. Are you yes. excited? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I've been here for a long time. Uh, I've been working for this festival, the Florida Film Festival, for a while, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of nervous. I am kind of nervous. This is my first uh, film to be in in the festival. Can you tell us a little bit about your film? Yeah, it's called You Have This Long. It's a four minute short about a father who's basically trying to get his daughter out of the car for her first day of kindergarten, and he uses a banana to do that. So. And it's basically the length of the banana is why it's called You Have This Long to get her out. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Yes, thank you. I'm here with James Feeney, the filmmaker behind Killer Cart. And your film was actually part of the uh, Best of Brouhaha, which played here at the Florida Film Festival. Yes. Yeah. And how, how did you come up with this concept? You know, it's kind of a strange. <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, I had the idea of working in, uh, back in high school, working at a grocery store as a bagger. Um, I'd be outside some days collecting shopping carts, and I'd watch one roll across the lot and just, like, slam into a parked car. And I'd wonder, like, you know, like, are they, are they doing this on purpose? Like, there's a story here. This is kind of a funny idea to think that a shopping cart could be possessed. And if so, why would they be upset with humanity, you know? What, is, what have you seen as far as an audience reaction to your film? It, it, it's usually, it, it's funny when I, there's a lot of lines in the movie that are obviously written to be funny. When I wrote them, I kind of thought they were sort of subtly funny, like in character funny, but they get belly laughs often. And what's your experience been like at Florida Film Festival? Oh, this has been incredible. This is what, I mean, this is one of the biggest ones that we've gotten into. Um, and we screened in two different blocks here. So the film actually screened here three times. It was uh, Midnight Shorts twice and then the Brouhaha block. And this festival's just done a great job in terms of, like, the, like the parties have been good. Um, the, uh, the, I just, I've met like a lot of great filmmakers, short and feature people. Everybody said, the staff seems incredibly, they're all incredibly nice and helpful um, and uh, they've just been very generous in terms of like hotel kind of stuff and it's just it's been a really really uh, fun weekend for me. Hey guys I'm here with Andrew Mudge the director writer and director of The Forgotten Kingdom. Andrew thanks for taking the time with uh, chatting with us. Tell us a little bit about the film. Um, the film is set in South Africa and also in a country called Lesotho which uh, looks like it should be pronounced Lesotho, but it's Lesotho, which is a tiny little country that's inside South Africa. The story, so it's a foreign language drama. Uh, it's spoken in the language of Sesotho. The story is um, a young man who, who was born in Lesotho, but has lived his life in the slums of Johannesburg, in the big city, and when his father dies, he, who his like, I should say, his estranged father. He finds out he, he has to bring his body home to bury him in his his village where he grew up, and so it's like a journey of a guy going home, and and he meets a girl. Lots of things happen there, but ultimately it's like the story of like somebody coming home, and like not just physically, but like kind of finding themselves. All right, Jeremy. So can you tell us a little bit about the film today? Uh, yeah, my film here at the Flat Festival is called Magical Universe, and it is a uh, documentary on, on a very interesting but strange outsider artist who I befriended over a decade, and I filmed him during the course of my friendship. Very nice. Where did you get the idea to write it? 
Uh, it's not. It's yeah. It's it's been a documentary. I met him on a you know random whim. I somebody introduced me to him sometime in the '90s, and I started following him and following him and filming him over many years and uh, many miles. And um, uh, after a while, I had so much material that I sort of put it together into a movie. So, what brought you to the Florida Film Festival? Uh, Florida. This is the world premiere of this movie, and. Um, when uh, I was sort of thinking about the kind of festivals that I wanted to premiere at, I was thinking about ones just like Florida, ones that have a great reputation, that are sort of low-key as a place to sort of, you know, start. Here with me today is Ann Waters. Ann, well, thank you for taking the time to talking to us. Absolutely. Happy to do it. Thank you. So tell me, what has been your involvement with the Florida Film Festival this year? Well, I am actually the program director of the film school at Full Sail University. And Full Sail um, has been very excited to be returning as the primary sponsor for the Florida Film Festival. We've actually been um, a part of the Florida Film Festival for 16 years, but this year marks our decade-long relationship as their primary sponsor. So that's my role on the, at the festival. And how have you enjoyed the festival so far? I have enjoyed the festival so much. It's not just about the movies, but the panels that they've been having and all the opportunities for us as filmmakers, for our students to come and visit things. Um, it has just been overwhelming. It's been really impressive this year. As you can see, the festival started out with a bang, and there is much more to show you. When we come back from the break, we'll chat with Jen Gould about the snazzy renovations at the Enzion, and also head over to the filmmaker welcome party at Rangetsu in Milan. So stay tuned. I'm David Kuski. You're watching Indie. I'm Zoe Bell, and you're watching Indie Cinema Showcase. Welcome back to our ICS Florida Film Festival special. Founded in 1985 by Tina Tiedke and the Tiki family, the Enzian Theater broke ground in Central Florida with a unique movie-going experience. A dinner theater showing first-run independent films and occult classic movies and occasionally some great live shows. A few years ago, the Enzian Theater opened up the Eden Bar, an outdoor full-service bar which has become a favorite with the locals and the filmgoers alike, serving up some of the most delicious food and appetizers. Mmm, truffle fries. Trust me, you've got to try them when you're here. I'm here with Jen Gould, who's going to give us a little taste of what the Enzian has in store for Central Florida in the next few years. So, guests have already been wild with all the changes in the Enzian Theater. What's next? Well, um, we're always looking for ways here at Enzian to improve our patron experience. If patrons haven't been here recently, there's a lot of new things when people walk in recently. We've had a lot of people go like, wait a minute, is this, is, this is still the Enzian? Yeah, this is still the Enzian. Um, and it's still the Enzian that everybody knows and loves, um, but it's just, a, you know, we've just added a little bit um, a little bit of extra. So when people come in, they'll notice that our carpets are completely redone. Our tables and chairs are going to be, by the end of the summer, completely redone. We've added a couple new booths and banquette sections, really comfortable, nice. great new places places to sit in the Enzion. In our back section, we've added some high tops that are elevated that are going to allow people to see. See much yep. better. It's going to uh, improve sight lines and visibility. And also, we're going to be having um, the new chairs that are coming are going to help our wait staff be able to travel around the theater quicker and service our patrons better. Very cool. So when is it actually all going to be done? By the end of the summer. We'll have our t we're just waiting on our tables and chairs, so if anybody comes, if you came right now today, you'd notice that everything else is completely renovated except our tables and chairs are going to be coming by the end of the summer. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. Very You'll have cool. To come. With Enzion's mission to entertain, inspire, and educate and connect the community with film, how does that tie in the local filmmakers and the the films that are produced locally here? Well, part of our mission is to support um, film throughout Central Florida. So we, um, of course, are supportive of the film students and, and just anybody who's making a film here in Central Florida, which is kind of exciting. You know, we know and love Central Florida, but we want everybody nationally to love everything that Central Florida is doing. So we, um, f through programs like Film Slam, the Brouhaha Film Festival, and even during Florida Film Festival, we have the, we have the Florida Sidebar and the Brouhaha Showcase that showcases filmmakers from Central Florida and the whole state of Florida. And that's something that's very important um, for us here at NCN. 
Very cool. And the film slam, that's every month. It's every month. So every month, you know, if somebody makes a film, there's no, you know, there's not a due date that, oh, if I missed it this year that I can't have it in, you know, film slam. I'll have to wait an entire year. You know, if you're working exactly. on a film, it's something that you could do every month, you know, submit a film. And it's an opportunity for local filmmakers to have their film screened here on the uh, screen here at Enzion. Yeah, you can breathe. There's exactly. Not that deadline uh -huh. thing going on. And have it, you know, here in front of an audience. And that's, I think that's really exciting for a filmmaker. I know if I was a filmmaker, that'd be something that's really exciting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how can the community become more involved? Where can we get this information? Well, we have our website, enzion.org. You can find out all the information about our programming, how to become a member of Enzion, and anything else you'd like to know about us. We are pretty um, pretty uh, big on social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, so there's many ways for you to get information about us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. talking with me, Jen. Thank you. Now let's get to the Filmmaker Welcome Party at Rangetsu, one of the many parties at the Florida Film Festival, and chat with some filmmakers. been enjoying the Florida Film Festival so far? The Florida Film Festival is awesome. This is like a, a great mix of fun and creative people with like food and film and it's been great. The food is really great, I have to say that. The films, that's a lot of questions. Now have you gotten to see any of the films? Yeah, I've actually, I've seen all of the shorts. I've managed to see all four programs and they have not disappointed. They're awesome. All right, so yours is playing. Safety. So what did you what did you do? Um, I made it and I'm also in it. Yes, it's based on um, a recent breakup that I had and I guess if I was to sell it to somebody it's about rebound sex and rejection. <laughs> and you know, inspired by um, unfortunate life circumstances, but I also think it's kind of like a generational thing that a lot of people can relate to. And I think that's cool because sometimes we don't realize the things that happen in our own lives. We can use that for an idea for a film. Yeah, I mean, I I really love um, work that feels very personal. I'm also like a fan of very like honest, realistic type films. So I mean, for me, like it, I generally use a lot of my own kind of like life experiences, but. You know, I love an action flick here and there, too. <laughs> I'm here with Sarah Zandi, writer-director for Reza Hazani Goes to the Mall. Sarah, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your film. Um, it's a short film. It's a comedy drama about um, a recent immigrant uh, who takes his son to the mall for the first time in the new country. And a lot of confusion and misunderstanding happens. Um, on his first day, and um, it all ends well, but um, it's just kind of a portrait of his first day in this new environment. Awesome. What, what inspired you to write this story? Was this a personal experience of yours? or? Yeah, it speaks to my own family's experience of immigration, sort of the, the, the confusion, the humor, and the terror of being in a new place that you don't understand how to navigate the system. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for joining us, and I wish you the best of luck at the festival. Enjoy the rest of your time. Thanks so much. Phew, I need a break. But when we come back, David will be talking with the Florida Film Festival special guests, Carrie Ellis from The Princess Bride and the Saw franchise, stunt woman turned actress, the beautiful Zoe Bell, and the legendary Tippi Hedren. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Carrie Ellis, and you're watching Indie Cinema Showcase. In the past years, the Florida Film Festival has had some pretty impressive guests. Where else in Florida can you mingle shoulder to shoulder with Oliver Stone, Glenn Close, Christopher Walken, Cloris Leachman, Dennis Hopper, and Edward James Olmos? And this year is no different. Our guest host, David Kusky, had the privilege of talking with Carrie Ellis and Zoe Bell. He was a little nervous, but Carrie and Zoe made him feel right at home. I'm here this afternoon with the ravishing Zoe Bell. She's here at the 2013 Florida Film Festival, and uh, you actually have a film that's playing right now, Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof, and uh, this is actually one of your first times acting. Yeah. You actually you started doing stunts. How did you get into stunt work originally? Just fell into it. <laughs> um, I uh, did gymnastics when I was younger for about 10 years, and then when I stopped doing gymnastics, I started up martial arts, so I did taekwondo. Um, and then through gymnastics, I train. Through gymnastics and martial arts, I met a bunch of people that were doing stunt work. So they were basically getting paid 
to do the stuff that my parents were paying to have me do. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, getting paid is a way better idea than paying for it. So I kind of asked a bunch of questions and started finicking around and introducing myself. And dad was a doctor and a guy came in with a bump on his head, turned out to be a stuntman. Dad came home with a phone number and locked me outside. What do you know? Turned into a stunt woman. That's how that happened. How did you end up making the transition from stunt work to acting now? Totally Quentin. He wrote Death Proof with me in it and then told me about it. And at which stage you really don't have much choice. It's not like you're going to say no to Quentin when he's already written a script, you know. Um, and so the transition has actually been a really sort of interesting one for me to wrap my head around. Uh, and also, you know, as a stunt woman, I've been performing my whole career mm -hmm. in front of cameras, but this way. <laughs> like, you never see the when I'm a stunt girl, you know. And you never see my emotions. So you never see me scared. You never see me sad. You never see me sort of feminine. You never see me angry, you know. And then when you suddenly you're an actor and people are expecting all of that and more to happen with your face towards the camera and in front of a crew of people. And it was, it's been a really like, it just took experience. So I did a lot of classes and took jobs just because it's like on set is where I learn. I do my best learning when I'm um, responsible to someone to be mm -hmm. good at it. You know, right. if it's just me, I'm like, well, I don't know, I'm a bit embarrassed. Someone else is like, we need you to do this. I'm like, yes, sir, done, right. What do I, what am I crying about? You know? <laughs>
Carrie, did you have any idea when you were working on The Princess Bride that it would become the phenomenon that it is today? No, I had no idea. I don't think any of us did. You know, it was one of those things that happen. Um, and it's, I always say it's the gift that keeps on giving, you know. Uh, you know, the, the folks who saw it when it first came out in 1987, they've now shown it to their kids and then their kids have shown it to their kids. So it's, it's a generational thing. You know, so we're all, I, I'm, I feel totally blessed by it. You're lucky as an actor to have any film that resonates with people. And so this is a, a really good one to, to be uh, associated with, you know. Mm -hmm. You're continuing your acting career. Mm -hmm. We've all seen you on the show Psych, and we love you on that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, aspirations to maybe pursue directing or maybe into some more producing or? Yeah, at some point I'd like to branch out and try different things. You know, uh, um, I grew up in this industry, so... Uh, I, I was bitten as the bitten uh, at a very early age, as as they say, bitten by the bug. So yeah, I'd like to try different things. You know, I'd like to try my hand at screenwriting and maybe directing, maybe producing. So well, yeah, I'd like to try that. Yeah, awesome. And uh, you actually, there was a film that you were working on, uh, Elvis and Nixon. Right. Is that right. still uh, in the um, works? That's going to come out uh, probably. Uh, we're going to work, get together, put put that together sometime a couple of years from now. I, I wanted to put it on the back burner now because I have some other projects I want to work on. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it'll eventually we'll get there. Yeah. Maybe in the next couple of years it'll be playing here. Maybe. At the Florida Film Festival. Maybe that would be nice. That'd be nice. And I know you just kind of you got in last night, but how have you enjoyed Florida Film Festival? I love so it. Far? I love it. There's a lot of great folks here, and you guys are all terrific, and uh, it's a it's a great team, and. I think you've done a, an amazing job. It's very professional. You guys have been around for a while now. What are you in 20, 20 years now? Uh, Twenty plus. I think twenty this plus is years. Twenty. Twenty seconds. Twenty two. Amazing. 22 years. Amazing. Great. Great work. I mean, really fun, nice folk, and I feel very welcomed here. Everyone's opened their arms to me, and I feel uh, the generous spirit of the festival. Yeah. Well, we're certainly glad to have you here, and thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank it's been you. a My pleasure. pleasure. My pleasure. And yeah. enjoy the rest of your time here, and best of luck to you in the future. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Thanks. While I order some truffle fries, we're going to be taking a break, but we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tiffy Hedren. You're watching Indie Cinema Showcase. Welcome back to our special edition of ICS, featuring the Florida Film Festival 2013. In the 1950s, our final guest started her career as a model in New York. Two years later, Alfred Hitchcock would sign her under his personal contract and launch her film career with The Birds, in which she was nominated for a Golden Globe for Promising Newcomer. It hasn't stopped since. Ms. Hedren's prolific career in film and television has allowed her to fight causes close to her heart, like the Roar Foundation and Food for the Hungry. We were very honored to spend some time with the legendary Tippi Hedren. I'm here with the beautiful Tippi Hedren. This day is really kind of dedicated to you. You have a couple of films playing. Isn't that fabulous, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Uh, free Samples is going to start things off. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in Free Samples? Uh, well, I got involved with it because I liked the script. And, of course, with uh, uh, any script that is being done, if it isn't a good story, forget it. Mm -hmm. You can have the best producers, directors, actors, and if you don't have a story, you haven't got it. And then I love this story. And then also, yeah. this evening, it's an evening with Tippi Hedren. Yeah. The Birds will be playing. Well, you know, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary of The Birds, which is amazing to me because it seems like it's just yesterday. Did you know when you were shooting The Birds that it was going to really kind of, I guess, be such a pivotal launching point for you you know you, you got the golden globe for uh, best newcomer no i don't birds. think i don't think anybody when they make a motion picture think that it's going to i mean who, who has the audacity maybe hitchcock did i'm sure he thought so uh but it's um it's always an exciting situation when that film does become a success and um but i i think the birds is is, is different it seems to have a life of its own you're continuing to be active too you have a, a few projects that you're working on yes i do um along with i i still i still do acting roles mm -hmm. and um look forward to, to that as well but i've been uh, rescuing lions and tigers for if i'm in my 41st year and, of course, becoming involved with them and uh, realizing how dangerous they are. They're apex predators, top of the food mm -hmm. chain, one of four of the most dangerous animals in the world, and yet our country says, sure, breed them, sell them to whoever has the money for personal, you know, as a pet or for financial gain, which is, is, is insanity in mm -hmm. the true sense of the word. Uh, the bill that we're working on now is to stop the breeding. Just stop it. And yeah. if people want to get involved in that, is there a way that they can, I guess, follow you on the that website? That is such or? a great question. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, our, our, um, our website is uh, shambhala.org, S-H-A-M-B-A-L-A.org, and we have all of the information about these animals and what we do at the preserve. It's in California, mm -hmm. about an hour northeast, and we have wonderful programs. You can even stay overnight in an authentic African safari tent. Have you had a chance to take any of the Florida Film Festival in yet? Um, um, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. How do you like it so far? Oh, it's wonderful. It's really fabulous. I, um, I'm very impressed with it. I'm, I, I love this theater. I was in the theater last night. And um, what a great idea, a dinner theater. Yes. It's so romantic and wonderful. And, and I love the films that are screened all year long. That's the, you know, it, it, it reminds me of the Turner Classic Movie mm -hmm. kind of feeling and been bringing back the, 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 the real art mm -hmm. of filmmaking and uh, the history. And I, I love the introductions to the movies that they make and, uh, and um, the little documentaries they slip in about filmmaking and, and years ago what happened. And, and um, I, I'm just enchanted with all of it. Well, I want to thank you, Tippy Hedren, for joining us this afternoon. I wish you the best of luck and enjoy the rest of your time here at the Florida Film Festival. Thank you. And that's a wrap on the Florida Film Festival 2013. We would like to thank the Enzion and the festival sponsors, venues, volunteers, employees, and filmmakers who attended this year. We would also like to thank our special guest hosts, David and Fernando, for helping us cover this event. We had a great time, and I hope you did too. Make sure you visit the Florida Film Festival website for details on the Fest for 2014, as well as the Enzion website for more programming information throughout the year. I'm Christina Carmona, and from all of us here at Indie Cinema Showcase, see you next time.